All right, one more quick little update on the Polymega. I'm a little behind the videos this week. Um, so I have received the Polymega, gotten it set up, and started work, um, copying some games to it. Um, done a little bit of gameplay playing on it. I haven't done any capture yet. I'm going to hold off a little bit of doing the full video one more time um, because so the as I mentioned when I did the unboxing the NES module the pinouts are for the NES so if you want to do Famicom games and I do have several Famicom games uh, like Final Fantasy I believe two and three um, for Famicom plus a couple others then I'm going to want to um, do the I, I want to test to see how those work with that module. If you're like, basically test every module that I have that I have games for, um, and uh, basically copy games from them and for them, and then uh, try to do gameplay capture and playing it to see how it feels. Um, and so, if I need to hunt down a, a Famicom adapter for that, I can get one online re really easy. I just I have a local, have local independent game stores. Um, one of them that's near my comic shop that I go to. I figure I'll check that first and then uh, go online. So that's pretty bit of delay on that. But otherwise, I have done like a little hands-on with it, played a few games. Um, a few quick notes. Uh, for pa so patching ROMs works generally pretty well for physical games. Like for um, my copies of Shin Megami Tensei, uh, 1, 2, and If, um, Dragon Quest games, uh, that sort of thing worked pretty well. It doesn't. It detected the uh, reproductions of American games like um, And Dead Again and uh, Soul Dece fairly well. Like, more or less right away. It did not handle reproductions of non-standard cartridges as well. I have the a repro cartridge of Final Fantasy, of uh, Wizardry 1, 2, and 3 Legend of the Game for the Super Famicom that was originally released for the Nintendo Power, uh, Super Nintendo Flash cartridge system in Japan only. And so this is a, and so somebody did a, this is a reproduction of a ROM dump and fan translation putting on a physical cartridge. Because otherwise you'd, you'd have acquired the separate whole separate module unit and all this, that, and the other thing. That game is not in their database, so I had to manually enter that as a separate game. Um, for disc-based games and fan translation and patches of those, I've tried out... Um, specifically, I've done un, um, looked into undubbed versions of... And subtitles included versions of Lunar Silver Star Story... Um, both for taking out some of the measures that working designs put in to, to jack up the difficulty and also doing an undub mainly less because I don't like the voice acting and more because I like having subtitles. If I'm going to play this game on a stream, for example, I would like to have subtitles so that the audience can read di on screen dialogue and that sort of thing. Uh, but in any case, for those games, um, it actually works best to do burned discs to basically do a uh, either patch a version um like rip your discs to your computer patch it that way and then burn it to disc or honestly doing a um finding someone who's done a pre-patched um rom and burn that to disc and do it that way on the one hand this does kind of defeat the purpose of um some of the measures they put in the platform in on the operating system for the soft for the console to avoid piracy but on the other hand like it's fine uh it also helps for situations where like if your physical disc is not in the best shape because some of those like putting aside bit rot on the discs themselves there is the bane of all disc of all any disk system where things are distributed in the jewel case of the th of the little um bump in the middle the plastic gets brittle breaks and then the disk starts rattling around inside potentially getting scratched up so burning a new fresh disk under those circumstances is like like being able to do that while still owning the physical game the physical game is a um is good 
Um, so like that worked. I have not done any Saturn games yet or um, any um, Sega CD or PC Engine CD. I'm planning to do. Um, I'm planning to do a part because they don't actually have any games for those systems yet. But I have a couple games in mind that I think I'll do for Saturn and for um, TurboGrafx CD. Try those out. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to what what or if I'm going to do for Sega CD yet because I I'm actually I'm actually actually pick up a see if I can get a Sega CD game from um a local game store first so I can try a physical disc. But that's where I'm at on that. Once I've kind of got a test group together, um, I will see about doing an act, doing some gameplay capture, test runs for various games, and seeing how this works. Uh, but so far, um, the other main issues I've run into in terms of copying games to the console is wear and tear on the contacts for the cartridges, and you sometimes need to go through and do cleaning, or even perhaps in a pinch, even though it's bad for the cartridge, blowing. Again, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend cleaning it properly, but if you don't have the stuff available and you're feeling like you're in a rush, that is a thing you can do. Um, cartridges rip very fast, and if you've done any emul paid any attention to hard drive space for emulation, you are undoubtedly aware that also cartridge games aren't very large, like as far as the Super Nintendo, um, NES, Famicom, or the uh, game uh, Genesis, that sort of thing. Those aren't vertically large. Disc-based games are a little more complicated. It also gets a little more complicated in terms of grouping them together in their system on the system under some circumstances. Um, like for example, for some of the Lunar games, it did not necessarily detect correctly that they're two different discs from the same game and bunch them together for potentially disc changing. We'll see how that goes for us. Like, that's one where I'm probably going to have to take some additional time and wait for it. Um, for a couple of them, for like the uh, disc game, like for Lunar, for the ROM dump, um, or I wanted to play it with the uh, the patch rather the patched version. I did run into a couple issues on the title screen, um, where the game would just straight up crash and I had to re restart the console. I don't know if that's a software issue or a problem with the actual disc. That I ripped from, but if I skipped the opening cutscene and went straight to the game itself, it was fine. Other than that, I did get into quick test runs with a bunch of games, like no more than a minute or two for each. Everything looked like it was working okay. Um, especially for us checking the patched ROMs to make sure that the patches worked correctly, because for the Shin Megami Tensei games, there are multiple different patches out there. Um, some of which, and also for a couple of the Dragon Quest games. Some of which add a diff additional uh, material or fix particular software glitches or that sort of thing that were introduced from earlier patches. So a little bit of a complicated mess there. So we will see how that goes. Um, again, I will do a prop review. This will probably be something that'll come out in Ju in June or July once I have a chance to sit down and play a bunch of things and capture a whole bunch of gameplay footage. Um, this is certainly not going to take the place for using my uh, N64 and a flash cart for um, Nintendo Power Retrospectives, mainly because Nintendo Power Retrospectives, or, uh, the platform does not support flash carts in this way, and nobody's cracked the firmware, and since the system is still actively being supported, I'm okay with nobody having actively cracked the firmware yet. Um, so that's where we are at on that. Um, I will keep you informed, but I, the good news is, is I have got to update my last Polymega video. I have my Polymega system. I received it about a week or two after I put that video went live, but a bunch of stuff kept came up, which prevented me from being able to put the video up quickly. Um, and everything appears to be working smoothly for now. Um, and we'll see how things go once I have a chance to spend an extended period of time with the platform itself. So that's where I'm at with that.
you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.